All right, let's take a moment to walk through what we've built so far uh, in our example tic-tac-toe game. Um, so what I'm going to do to help me illustrate this is that I'm going to collapse a lot of my code as I go along. Um, that way I can see the whole thing in one view. Um, I'll hide some of the comments. Oh, that makes it look weird. Um, but anyway, so I'll leave the comments open, but I'll collapse the methods so that way I can um, hop between them more easily. Um, Okay, uh, so every with uh, every Java app, it will always start at public static void main, and that's the the starting um, method for any and every Java applet, um, and um, it takes a parameter, and these are the command line arguments. Um, if so, if I were to um, launch my app and I did Java, and this app is and this file is you know like add a letter D and if I were to write this uh, this app out and compile it and run it I could also add like um, optional arguments here um, that it would then add into this list we're not going to do that never once in this class um, I'm simply explaining why that's there and that's built into every Java applet okay um, inside our main uh, method the first thing that we do is we call a method with no parameters um, and this will activate this method down here before I go into that let's just revisit a couple of these terms um, so public just is referring to scope and that's an important term uh, that we'll need to keep in mind and that just means what can access that the stuff that's in your pockets, for example, that's scoped just to you. No one else is grabbing stuff out of there. Um, so private, uh, so that would be private. Protected would sort of be like the keys to your house. Um, protected is, yes, that's meant for you, but your family members will also have the keys to the house. So any of your children will get those keys. That's protected. And the last one is uh, public here, and that just means anything can call, uh, can call it. So, um, which is wh what you have to have start with because um, your outside environment, the JRE, is calling this uh, initial method to get things going. Um, so the starting method will always be public. And I should also note that this is inside the class that we first created, and the class name will always be the same name as the file. Um, okay. So we've got our initial class and our starting method, and which calls in a welcoming method. It passes no parameters. So we'll go down to this, and this is static and void, and uh, so that means it won't return anything. And I'll come back to static in a minute. Um, and so now we get our first little bit of complexity here. Um, we're creating a loop, and we're sometimes printing one thing and other times printing another. Uh, so we start the loop out by create uh, just like we went over in class a loop has three parts um, the uh, the counter or the iterator um, the condition and the increment so we know that this will start at zero it will keep going as long as X uh, which is starting at zero remains less than six uh, and it will um, go up by one each time so that means I want to print six lines uh, even though I'm saying less than six, because I'm starting at zero, it will go up to five, but since zero is included, this is six items. So even though this is less than six, it is six items because I'm starting at zero. Um, and that's something to keep in mind. We're going to keep on using that throughout the class. Um, so now we're using a, a funny operator called a modulus, and that's being uh, used inside of an if statement. Um, so an if checks the condition just like how this is a condition, uh, this conditional statement will only run the code inside if the condition is satisfied, if this resolves or boils down or gets computed to equal true. So we're creating a comparison. We're saying that this should equal zero. And what this modulus uh, operator does is takes uh, the, uh, the number, and it'll start at zero, and divides it by two. And then it will take the remainder, and that's what's being produced here. The remainder after this number is being divided by 2. 
zero divided by two uh, is an impossibility. You can't uh, break zero into two groups. You'll just get two groups of zero, no problem. Um, but that leaves no remainder. So zero is, uh, in essence, divisible by two cleanly without a remainder. And so this will print uh, when I first start playing. And so that's where this line comes from. And the second one, when x is equal to 1, 1 can't be divisible by 2 without a remainder. And so that's why you'll get this line instead. Um, and then it'll go up to 2, and when x is equal to 2, it'll both print out one of these lines, and uh, because it is equal to 2, um, it will also print out this line. And then it'll go back up, um, x will be 3, and 3 is not an even number, so we'll get another one of the squigglies. And then x will equal 4, we'll get that number. x equal 5, not divisible by 2, we'll go back to the squigglies. And so that's the whole welcoming method. After this welcoming method is finished executing its loop, it'll hit the closing bracket, it shuts down, and so this entire method uh, closes, and we go back to here. Um, so that's the thread of our application. Our thread starts here, we went, hopped over to this method, and now it came back to this loop. This is a new loop. This is a while loop. And when it's, when it's a while true loop, we know that's an infinite loop because true will always equal true. Um, and so that's a tautology, then true is always equal to true. Um, and so this will keep on looping indefinitely unless we um, we create an event like system exit which will shut down the app entirely um, and breaking us out of this loop. This break, if I use this break um, over here for example, I, I won't use that here, but if I use this break um, this would break me out of that loop. So that's another way to add exit the loop. Um, but it wouldn't shut down the app, it would just actually go to this line, um, which would then shut down the app. Um, so it would, in essence, do the same. Um, but the break in, instead is inside of this switch. And so the switch is going to um, uh, put a number in, inside the switch, and if the number is equal to 1, it'll do this. If the case uh, the number is equal to 2, it'll do that. So it's an easier way Rather than um, running, making a lot of if, else if, else if, or else statements um, to test many different situations, a switch is a shortcut way of doing this. Um, but we're not entering in a number here. We're actually calling a method uh, in order to determine which case we're going to run. And the method must then have an integer return value. Um, and so that's really important because if this was instead, if I said void here, um, this is going to start throwing an error because it needs a number here. And when I say int right here, I'm promising Java, hey Java, expect an int to be returned. So when Java sees menu parentheses, it will think of that yes as a method call, uh, and activating the method class, but it knows that it will come back as a number, so it can treat it uh, like an integer, and so that's why it's not throwing an error here. Um, so let's take a look at what happens inside our menu. So here we see a new type of object called a scanner, um, and this is when we're creating or instantiating. So this new word means that take uh, the scanner code and copy it into this a new variable in our heap memory called s um, and um, create a scanner and where the scanner um, constructor uh, when it creates a new scanner uh, it runs a method called a constructor which builds the thing um, the constructor apparently needs a parameter and this parameter is system.in do you need to know this? no um, because on your on your cheat sheet, uh, when you take the AP computer science test, this will um, this line will be given on that cheat sheet. So you don't need to memorize it. Knowing what it means is great, and it creates a scanner object. And the scanner object has this thing called next line that we can use, and that is what's happening right here. It actually allows us to 
directly type in an input into the console while the app is running. Um, and that it allows us to take that on a, on a line. So that will go on to the next line as we type in. And we are taking an input, storing it in this uh, variable, which is a string type. And before we stick it in that uh, string variable, we're also forcing it to lowercase. Um, so this will, uh, the scanner will run the next line. And once that input comes here, before it's stored there, it will also be forced into lowercase. And once all of this line has resolved, it, it will then be stored inside of this string variable. OK. Uh, next up is an, our first array. And uh, we talked a little bit about an array when we we're looking at um, string array of our args. So we've already looked at that before, but now we're actually creating a, a, a string array, which is just a list of sorts. Um, uh, you know, this is listing objects. Uh, there is actually a thing in Java that we'll learn later on called a list. So an array is different than a list object. Um, so I should be careful with my terms, but uh, as far as uh, you can th uh, consider a list, it's a, a consecutive um, uh, a consecutive list of objects. I'm trying to think of another word for it, but um, an arrangement of objects. I don't know. So uh, this is just an example of strings, strings, strings. These are string literals um, that are all now forming this group of strings. Um, and uh, they are accessed by um, specifying a, uh, an index. So I could write nope at zero, and this is the first item. That would be the zero indexed object. Um, and this would be object number one, two, three, four, five. And so the length of this would be six, but um, the index would start at zero and only go up to five. Um, OK. So that's the, uh, again, index or the key. Uh, There's another, sometimes we use that term, but normally we'll just use index. Um, and so we set up these two uh, uh, variables, uh, these two string arrays, um, with all of the possible answers for uh, that no, they don't want to play, or yes, they do want to play. So we'll record their answer here. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll loop through every one of the no values and we'll see do they equal each other um, and this is doing something that's very very not cool that's comparing strings using a double equal sign we should never do that um, and because that might check to see if there are two pointers pointing to the same object in memory not to see if that object in memory has the same value as each other and if that confuses you you, you know you're not alone on that um, but I don't have the time to explain that right here in this video. So if you need to understand why input dot equals um, tester, that's the better way of writing this. And um, it's the same thing how I'm doing it down here. I'm just testing to see if they are the same. Uh, if input is equal to tester, just like I could I could write this the other way: tester dot equals input. Um, so either side, I could run the same thing. Um, and as long as they're uh, similar values, this would uh, resolve to true, and then it would run this code that, no, I don't want to play. Um, if input equals test, yeah, because tester uh, in this for each loop is going to pretend to be each object uh, in this list in turn, and we'll compare each one. The for loop, this is uh, the traditional loop that we saw before, um, the iterator, the condition, and the increment. Um, and this does a very, the exact same process, but it works it uh, differently. Rather than this becoming each string in turn and it copying its value over to that each one at a time, instead, uh, we are accessing the array directly we're saying okay now pull in the zero element uh, the zero index uh, here and then it'll go up to the next one and pull in from there and the same thing though we'll, uh, we'll test to see what the user wants and then if they say they want to play we will then go ahead and create uh, our, our game board which I will talk about 
in the next video.